Good evening. I'm Rapstein, and here we are with your financial market wrap-up. And this wrap-up is for the evening of Monday, the 9th of October, 2023. A big day. We already know that Chuck Schumer has been in China, made some headway. Making headway means he met with President Xi. He got his point of view across to him. He's not going to convince him to do anything, but he had the meeting, and I'm impressed with that. What we're all not impressed with, of course, is the, the, the event uh, in Israel, the event that's going to take place now in Gaza. And my inclination is this. I am not a military man, but I know from watching what we did in Afghanistan and Iraq and Syria, you don't want to go fight the city war. You're going to get slaughtered doing that. It's so much easier. Tell the people that at noon on Tuesday, these four blocks are coming down. Take them down. You've warned this population. At 2 o'clock, we're going to take down these four. At 3 o'clock, that section is gone. At 4 o'clock, that section is gone. And you keep going and you tell the population, don't be there because our Laser-guided missiles are taking this whole area down, and you get rid of the cesspool. Now, you will say it's inhumanitarian. I get it, and it is. They slaughtered a 1,000 people, innocent people, no guns. These weren't soldiers. They come in, they do it, and the people there defend them. What do I mean by that? They don't go turn them in. I don't even know who you'd turn them into. All right? They're trying to be their own government within that. They're not going to get the state of Israel. It's really that simple. Therefore, get rid of the cesspool. That means Arab countries should send their ships. Israel should give them a safe corridor and let them get out of Gaza in some manner. If they want to stay in Gaza, that's terrific. Let the Arab world rebuild it after Israel not only takes all that down. If you want to get rid of the tunnels, if you can't get back your hostages... You got cluster bombs, those type of bombs that we saw in Afghanistan. They'll take out all that. They'll build them again. Let them spend years building it. There's no food. There's no water. There's no power. It's going to get worse. Again, the population there hides Hamas. It's known. What else do you do? You don't go to kill the population. Israel doesn't have to do what they did. But you do take the city apart. Let them live in tents. Let them get out of there. Let them be act right. This has gone on since biblical times, my friends. This is not since Israel was founded 75 years ago. This whole area of the world, everybody owns it. The Crusades, you want me to go on and on? We all know the history. I don't know that there's a right answer, but if people can't act like people, then get rid of the people. In which manner? I didn't say kill. Level the area, let them spend their effort and time rebuilding. Okay, that's my opinion. Am I right? I'm probably so wrong on this, but I'm angry. All right. So when you look at the E-mini S&P, you've come down. Will you get a bounce? Well, my special report on metals is gone. History. If you didn't get it, too bad for you. I think it's on the money. I was showing you the 30, the 15, and the 5-year often Form the bottom right now, beginning October 4th through this next two-week period. If you go in and you looked at what it did, you chop a little and you gradually start your move back up. Now, how does it all work out? You know, the Fed meeting's coming November 1st. That's in this report coming up. Market knows what the Fed meetings are. It's a 30-year, a 15, and a 5. You think the dates always change like that? It doesn't work that way. CPIs come out at certain times, government reports, inflation comes out, uh, PPIs come out. We've, we have seen in a 30-year and a 15-year period contraction and expansion. You think not? Do you remember the mini, we thought it was a mini depression going to hit us, and then the market came out of it, and away we went again. You remember the helicopter money from COVID, all right, going out like there's no tomorrow. Now you're pulling it back in. You've gone through expansion and contraction. I believe that the market is going to try to do that right now. Let's take a look at the chart action. Is it happening? Well, unless you get back under these lows, 
there's a good strong instance here where a trade bottom, I'm not saying the bottom yet, but I think a trade bottom of very big importance is trying to come alive. Why? Higher lows, higher highs. Okay. To negate this, you got to get back under this area. We knew the 4,200 area was a popular chart point. It still is. Where do you think the market rallied up to now in the past week? Right back to that neutral line. How often do you hear me say that the 18-day moving average of closes in red is the line in the sand? The green line is the 100-day average, and the gray line is the 200. How often did you hear me say, and I told my clients, my, my subscribers in the morning, I go, I don't like you selling that first test of a 200-day moving average. It's a big number. It's almost a, a one-year number. And if you look at the weekly charts, it's a four-year number. Then I looked to see where the market's at, how it stepped out of the Bollinger Band, fought its battle at that number. I know it got under there, but the zone was in that area. And now momentum's turned up. If the market decides it can rally further, if, and that's a big if, it, generally they fight a battle in that first challenge here, then your next number is the 100-day average. If the market can keep going, it either embeds or gets a correction. Why? It spent all its power. So when a market comes up like it did here, if you don't embed, you inevitably, how do you correct an overbought condition? You pull back. In this case, it turned back very hard. But because of the seasonals, I've got doubts you're taking out these lows again. That doesn't mean I'm right. It's what the seasonals are pointing to. When we come over to the Dow, same thing. Here's your 18-day average of closes. Here's now your 200 and your 100. You can see how they're lining up. Again, take out those lows. I want to go back to the drawing board, and I will. Don't take them out. There's a lot to talk about going right into the end of the year. Same thing in the Russell. You got it. So I didn't create that report because I wasn't looking at something real important. I created it. I put it out there, stuck the neck out. We luckily, I was right that I thought September was going to be a big down month. And in that other report, I even mentioned, if you'll recall, that I would expect that October becomes a churn month. And then we get a gradual move to the upside into the end of the year. I didn't say a running bull market by any stretch, but that's still my game plan as to where I think we're at. In the 10-year notes, you lost the embedded reading. To get back to the 18-day average, it's exactly where I think you're headed. And same thing here. You already did it. So in these markets, this didn't embed, by the way. This was just oversold. But again... You've got a pretty strong argument here after this huge break all the way down that maybe you're finding a trading bottom. You're certainly on a day-to-day -day basis on the bull camp now, not the bear, unless you see something I don't on that chart. In the dollar index, the dollar, lower highs, lower lows. Will it close under the 18-day average and say, ah, because that would end this whole rally from right here that came on up and the market has finally gone into a big pause. Has it closed back under the 18-day average? I want to prove a point. No. Since back here, as we came out of July, that would be the first sign something is amiss. Now, I know everybody's talking we're going to 110 in the market, but understand when the market's going up, it's never high enough. And when it's going down, it's never low enough. That's how people talk. If you can, you got hearing aids, turn them off. Look at the charts for yourself and try to figure. At best, this is a correction we're in at this point. At the very best, it could be a top. I don't know yet. In the euro currency, look at how it's back up to the 18-day average. When's the last time it closed over that? You got to come all the way back here. The same thing in July. Well, now you're up at that number. This should be very interesting over the next few days. Do you want to be short anymore? The work isn't saying that. The work has got higher lows, higher highs. In the British pound, the market came out of the embedded reading. And what did it do right off the bat? You tell me. The market is a step back here. Watch. 
started calling that we should go right here. You lost the embedded reading back to the 18-day average to fight a battle the way I teach in my enhanced Bollinger Band course. I'm telling you, I, I, I take the name off chart sometimes and I just look and I go, this is what the work is saying and away you go with it. In Bitcoin, okay, sideways action. That's what I'm viewing it. Friendly sideways action, but I don't think there's a lot of upside in the market right here. D Sprint versus WTI, the differential's 352 points. You're still underneath this number. If you get over it, it'll tell me the, the Brent is getting stronger than WTI. We're not doing that at this point in time. The market's going in a big decline. I have no idea to this moment what took this market down from 93.16 all the way down here to the, what, the 80, 20 area? I mean, I don't get it, all right? Did the world change that much? What did everybody miss on that break? Can't answer it, okay? What I can answer is I don't think that OPEC will stand for it. And if interest rates are pausing in any manner and you take some of that pressure off, I think the next thing that the demand comes for is oil eventually. Is the work saying to buy it? It is not. It's nice to talk about it, but the work isn't saying to do anything. Same thing in our WTI crude. You got excessive under the Bollinger Band and it snaps back. When I tell clients, I know you want to buy it here. I want to buy it here on the other side of it. Sometimes that means you got to buy it higher, but not there. Because I don't know from there if you don't get one of those monster corrections like selling it down here and it comes up. The real world is you, you can't handle that pressure. In the heating oil market, you saw the huge break. Now, I've got my heat on in my home. We're in the 40s in Chicago already. I think I went for a walk at uh, 3 o'clock today. I'd love to get out of the house and just walk a little bit. And... Uh, 55 degrees, pleasant as can be to walk, sunny, it was beautiful, uh, very nice, but you got to come back to your heat at home. So my bill's going to go up. So heating oil is going to come now into the demand cycle. And natural gas has been, this is a big base right now. It's going to take a real lot to get underneath these lows. You got to approach this market as though, uh-oh, where do I get in? on the long side, not the short side, let somebody else pick the top. The major supports here, and you might even get over the next week or so, where the 18-day average starts getting over the 100. That could be interesting too. In Europe, we're already seeing natural gas taking off. So you put it together, you gotta come up with game plans, you gotta have a look at a chart, you don't break your rules. If you haven't taken my enhanced Bollinger Band course, my gosh, treat yourself to a gift because this is where you want to pay close attention to it. But if you don't understand what I'm talking about in technical indicators, there's no point to take the course. So let's get you the basics. The Guide to Technical Indicators, Volumes 1 and 2. It's everything, synopsis form, great graphics to go with it. It starts talking chart patterns. Uh, trend lines, different types of moving averages. People don't realize that there's th three big ones that people use, okay? Simple, weighted, exponential, different spreads. Why do people look at spreads in futures? You don't use a spread in the stock market or ETF. You use them in futures. They start to tell you things. Option primers, money management, very important. We all are always tweaking money management. I do it all the time. You have to, the game changes. No AI system I know has beaten the market for a two, three year period, none. That, you know, and you would think, oh, AI can do it. Nah, if it were that simple, I think we'd all go out and buy it and we just give money to it and we're done with it, right? I have not seen any in the futures markets that have done it. I read the articles as to how they fail. If you know of those that are working, real money, two, three years, write me on it. I'd like to know about that. I don't know about them. Uh, and I think it's because so much of the market is a random walk. So many of the events with 90% leverage come in and it works against you in certain ways. It's very different than maximum you put down in the stock market, typically is 50% margin. And I know you can trade ETFs three, four, five times, whatever the heck they wanna do. 
that's up to you, okay? When you do those, you realize how thin they get on you and is it the best thing? At least futures markets, you have volume, especially the front end of them. So, and that's another thing to learn about, okay? That's why it's guide to technical indicators, volume and open interest. IraEpstein.com, free offers, or move your cursor to the top here and take it from there. I'm Ira. I hope I'm not offending anybody, but it's horrific what's going on in uh, the Middle East. Unwarranted. I'll talk to y'all later.